We just saw Last Starfighter. Woo! Woo! Starlight. Ow! Starlight. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the what the movie's about. The plot. Okay, so basically you have Alex, who's a small town kid who lives in a trailer park, little community, who has an arcade machine of the Last Starfighter video game in it. And lo and behold, it ends up being an alien test. Whoever can get the high score and beat the game is actually recruited to be a starfighter. That's right. He's, uh, like you said, uh, in the, the, well, he's kind of like, I guess he's, he's hoping to go to college. He's yeah, unhappy yeah, it's with a, it's his a life. a very small town, poor kid trying to get into college. He gets rejected. He has to... He, you know, so they're like, oh, maybe you can go to community college, and that's not, you know, not enough for him. Not enough for him. So he's kind of down in the dumps, and then he just, you know, starts playing this video game, and he starts getting into it. And before you know it, he's beating the game and getting the highest. He's score. gonna bust the record. He's gonna bust the record and a nut. So he's gonna bust the record. <laughs> yeah, he, he he gets a high score. Basically, I guess beats the game. Yeah, he beats the game, and everybody in the little trailer park is super excited and they have a party have a party it's so fucking stupid in the fact that as soon as he beats the game people start screaming oh my god he beat it and all of a sudden like all 45 people who live in the community all rush out of their traders all fully dressed to celebrate like a party it's like what the hell are you and guys the dog doing and the cat and the wise uh <laughs> man that runs the the wise grocery store dude who like he's like the yoda of the of the trailer park community the old janitor so and like you, like you said, the the video game is really a test of recruitment for uh, some sort of a desperate uh, fleet fleet in another planet that's in the middle of some sort of civil war kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, where the movie hits his flaws is basically the villain in this movie is non-existent. They introduce the bad guy, and he is. He's Just, like the son of the rebel leader, I guess, right? And he's literally in it for 10 minutes. He's whiny. and He's, he's a whiny little bitch. And then when the shit goes down at the end in our big main battle, I know I'm jumping the gun, but he gets overthrown and just like taken to prison. It's like, what? Yeah, did what he blow happened? up on the ship? Didn't you make it clear? I mean, I guess everybody technically gets blown up because of the But I think they're trying to do the Darth Vader thing where he kind of like, remember? In, Dar- in the Death Star, he gets pushed away and he's still alive. Because they don't, they don't even have a shot of him. I don't know what they no, said. No, no, they all had to have died. I mean, they did the Death of Awesome. All the ships blew I guess up. we'll never know if they made a part two. They probably have a scene where he ejects him. No, no, didn't they show him? Oh, yeah, when, when it was getting shooting, he got into a pod and left. Oh, did he? They did it, but we, it just so crappy that. Oh man, that, that, I didn't, when they I, were taking him into I prison, missed that. One of the things. Oh, shot. he jumped down a chute. Yeah, that's it looked like a trash shoot. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, I forgot I, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he ejected out of the ship. Oh man, I mean, he's okay. landing. He's living on the moon. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Well, anyway, he, he gets recruited. Um, uh, a guy shows up in this futuristic car, who's like kind of like a salesman. He he talks him into coming in the car. Smooth talking old he, guy. He created the game, mm-hmm. and. The car turns into a flying spaceship and he leaves to the other planet. And he introduced him to this uh, giant academy where everyone's prepping for a battle. Exactly. And there's different people from different worlds that beat the game. It's a lot like Starfleet in the Star Trek movies yeah. where they show, like, you know, the, the typical uh, meeting room where all, they're all getting prompted and they have, like, an array of races sitting in there. Every kind of ra- colored alien and penis shaped heads and there's a bunch of aliens of course vagina faces he's the only one that looks normal the 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 main race was the right rylans 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 they had big foreheads and they were bald and they had like their hair was like quaffed up i believe it's called a perm rylos (laughs) yeah they're all permed up and then the bad guy shows up in a hologram and and he gives them he yells like his daddy daddy. like i get he's supposed to be the brat like he's supposed to be uh, the son of you know but it kind of went too far with it like he was like he, he's he was kind of like the bad guy in like an animal house movie like really like yeah it's so extreme like, and yeah it was even like, and Cobra was... Commander was a little bitchy too but 
That's corporate commander, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was kind of like, what are you so pissed off about? And they never really give you the reason or make you feel like this is a bad guy. He's just sort of a whiny brat that for whatever reason, there isn't... He's yeah, leading he's, these he's other with, races. Yeah, he, I guess he's he's running the. Yeah, whatever. It, the prune people. The prune, the prune, the prune people. <laughs> and I, then, well, okay, the the, I guess the twist is not twist, but the turning point, as yeah. our old film teacher used to say, turning yeah. point. Yeah. He shows up and he doesn't even want to be there. He quits. So, the guy Centauri, yeah, Robert he gets Preston, re- the, brings him all the way back to Earth. But we missed a part when he left. They left like a robot called the Beta Unit, yes, which beta cloned house. him, and it's supposed to take over him while he's gone, so no one knows he's gone. But it's horrible because he's so different. Yeah, he's trying to learn on the fly yeah, a which whole is the, different cool race of, of beings. So he's kind of like, all of a sudden, he has to inherit a girlfriend. He has to inherit a group of friends that are going camping, and he doesn't know what the hell to do. He's just trying to fit in and figure it out on the fly. Which is to me the best part of the movie. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get to the good, the, good, the super good stuff. Yeah, and what's evident- good, what's bad? Yeah. Okay, so then he comes back, and then while he's gone, they get attacked. The 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 Starfleet the gets attacked at yeah. the other planet. Every basically everyone dies. Yeah, the whole whatever's left of the Starfleet, uh, whatever they call themselves, pretty much gets blown to shit in a. In an attack. They, they just, all get attacked. Yeah. But then before that happened, the bad guy sent a bounty hunter to Earth to assassinate him. Yeah. Even though he already quit. Yeah, just because, just in case. Just in case. He's supposed to be a, a starfighter. And star then fighter. Centauri gets wounded. He gets fatally shot. And then that brings him back to the planet. Right. And then he realizes he's the only hope. And he needs to and then his, the, fulfill his, his destiny. Yeah, and then the his co-pilot, which is the penis head, penis head, uh, from, Michael Sarah from RoboCop, the guy from RoboCop, the old man from RoboCop. But he does look like uh, the guy from uh, Beverly Hills, um, the guy from uh, <laughs> Police Academy, <laughs> Lieutenant yes. Lassar. The Lieutenant. whole time, you know, when I was little, I always used to think that that was Lieutenant. Lazard he does sound or like, Punky Booster's dad. He does dad. look and sound like him, but it, but yeah, exactly. Punky Booster's adopted grandfather. Yeah, I just kept expecting him to turn around and go. You have to go to many, many planets. And <laughs> for some reason, I, 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 I would have. Drummond from Different Strokes would be a great guy too. He, had that, he did have the rhino's head. <laughs> Any of those generic old white guys from the eighties. So then he's the only hope, and then. And then, then that's I think probably the the slowest part of the movie. Him and, and the, the co-pilot Gr- Grig, the turtle. He's like a guana. Yeah, they try to. They're kind of. He's like training him before they have to, they have to the build attack the comes. repertoire between both of them yeah. and show like a somewhat of a brotherhood. They know when the attack is coming because the bad guy told them. So they're kind of <laughs> waiting around. It's not for like the, he hid it or anything. They're hey, waiting the around moon. for the armada to show up. Yeah. And in between, they're becoming friends, and then he's teaching him about his culture. And they have a couple little battles with rogue planes in, in a cave. If he's basically waiting around, and, yeah, it's and kind of it, like the uh, it's kind of like the Star Wars scene where the Millennium Falcon is hiding inside that cave, and it's really inside of a worm, or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're they waiting for the bombers that. that's, that's to good. go overhead. That's a good idea. Yeah, they were kind of copying that, and then uh, the movie intercuts between him and. The, his beta unit. That's when. That's 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 why that part's better. Yeah. And it's like little vignettes of him helping. Uh, it's almost like a bunch of little funny skits. Yeah. Which I guess to work keep the movie funny for kids. With, I think it works flawlessly because Beta Alex is a lot more interesting than Alex. He's like Starman. Yeah. Well, he's also more. How would you say? Down to earth, even though he's not. I mean, the funny thing about well, him he's is naive, that, and he he takes everything literally, and then. And he has more of an of a he has more of I would say comedic aspect about his being than But you know what's funny is that the real Alex acts like a robot. Yes. That's he's very exactly like what I mean. monotone, yeah. And yeah. then the other one you can tell he's having fun. You can tell he probably liked doing that. Exactly. He's just like on the whim flying, like he doesn't know what he's doing, so he's just trying to fuck Maybe it. Maybe they if it works, it works. That, if it doesn't, it doesn't. They probably filmed all that first and then when they got to the 
the the Alex part, he's like, fuck, I'm bored right now. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like that one scene where they're in the camp and everybody's yeah, like, the best part. everybody's with their own chicks under their own bags or whatever. And she pops up all pissy and he's like, what the hell? Am I supposed to stick my tongue in your ear now? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's just learning on the fly. He doesn't know anything about anything. Well, we skipped it. In the beginning of the setup, there's another girl that's his age. That's his girl, his love interest. Uh-huh. And so when he becomes a robot, he's so different and distant, she starts getting angry at him. Yeah. And so she's like, you know, basically just wants to be with him the whole movie. Well, yeah. She's she flirting are. with him. He doesn't get it. She's angry, you know. And he just straight strange. up at one point is like, fuck it. Listen, I ain't Alex. I'm like a robot. Whatever. He just straight up just like He eventually bullshit. confesses to her. Yeah. And then that's the end of that storyline. And then basically they're waiting around the cave. He gets an idea talking about his little brother, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. And they decide that we're, they're going to wait and then the army's going to fly over them and then they'll attack him from behind. And it finally happens and it's a quick, kind of a quick battle. It almost looks like uh, you're playing Star Fox. It looks like Nintendo 64. Yeah, Star, Star Fox, Fox was, more, was more intense though. <laughs> But um, yeah, they have a battle. He, he blows up the the bad the bad guy ship, and it hits a, a moon. And he a comes lot of, back. He comes. A, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of polygons flying everywhere. <laughs> he <laughs> comes back to Earth to pick up the girl, and then which, by the way, that CGI shot actually looks really, looks really damn good, good. because they, they they composited with real stuff. And it's darker lighting, and yeah. they actually have like, I don't even know if it was possible at the time, but they have like rendered smoke. Like when the ship is landing, I think the, they just uh, I think they just put it over. I don't know, man, because that's a lot of smoke. They like had smoke. The they had, they probably know. had big fans blowing up dust, and they had maybe, it. maybe. But that's hard, yeah. But it worked. All I know is that that shot actually is one of the best looking shots in the movie. Well, that's basically the overall plot. Now we'll talk about what was good, what was bad. Okay. What was good? The kid, his little brother, yeah, Lewis kicked ass. Typic typical eighties kid. Not smart Alec, bad words. Bullshit little kids nowadays on TV. It's like he's smart ass, he's cursing, he's uh, any chance possible. It's all about girls and Playboy magazines and all that cool shit, how it really is. And he's funny. Him and Beta Alex together yeah. steal the movie, basically. They should have their own TV show. <laughs> <laughs> but the wow. kid has one liners, everything he says, what the shit? He's looking at a Playboy, Yolanda, <laughs> baby. You're They're all one line. Maybe we'll show him. He kicks ass. I guess his point is just, I guess, for just to be the, the funny kid. Yeah. To relate to the kids. Well, I mean, I guess in those... The little brother. I think in 1984, every movie sort of resembled an Amblin film. The E.T. thing. So there's always a little kid, a little, a little smart like, alec kid. Yeah, a little, or, little sister like uh, Drew Barrymore. Yeah. There's always a little cute kid somewhere. And for me, it works because no, yeah, it I grew good. up in these movies and I always identified with these kids because that's how I was. You know, I was into monster movies. I was always a smart ass kid. I always, I still talk like a dirty sailor. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how kids talk. Yeah, nowadays you get these kids who are like so clean and stereotypically like generic and they have no personality on in movies. Yeah, or, now if they if, if if Oh my god, God forbid if they prop God they forbid an eight year old movie, say a a curse word on a movie. It's like what the hell? If they modernize this movie like improperly you know that kid would be on his computer the whole time. He'd be like the little techie dork thing. Yeah, he probably it's so he probably would call him and say, "Hey, Alex, I need you to hack the system and let us get in." In his iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. Okay, kids now were, of course, kids were allowed to be kids in those days. They were more uh, tomboys, and it was all about monsters and getting muddied and running around and having adventures. Now it's all about playing video games and being techie. Oh, we're really obsessed about this kid, man. Yeah, I know. Every day. You know? It's 14 minutes in, we're talking about the kid. Fucking kid. The effects, of course, are revolutionary. Yeah, I mean... I mean, if you watch it now, obviously, like, you can tell it's computerized. It looks like kind of like a cartoon. Well, like I said, it looked but, like, a, it looked like but, an N64 game. But that was like... But you got to think, at the time, it was kind of ballsy to say, you know what, we're just going to do all, CG all, the sh all the space battles, all the ships and everything, with whatever computer animation technology we had at the time we're just gonna do it regardless of whatever it looks like and I think because of that 
it kind of made it memorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many people remember this movie. That's the big thing movie. of the movie is that it was all computerized. Yeah. And the whole, I mean, I always remember that's, the Death Blossom thing. To yeah. me, it always stuck. I, I remember I used to play with models and shit. And that's I why used it's to, on lists and stuff. Yeah, and if I it used, wasn't that, it'd just be another 80s movie that was trying to copy right. Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. And even though they do copy mm-hmm. a lot of Star Wars stuff, it has its own visual style and it has its own story. I mean, Star Wars is in another world and never pertains to us. And it's always a huge, epic story. This is small. It pertains to Earth. It's a little small town story that turns into something big. And I think that, like I said before, that's what makes the, the movie kind of like, it, it, you know, it's kind of warm. You yeah, know? it's like a it, feel good. It's, it, yeah. It's simple. I know you mentioned it earlier, but like at one point or another, especially with the trailer park, older people whatever it kind of reminds you of uh, batteries not included yeah where it's kind of like a bunch of old people that live in a park he's like the only young kid who's trying to get out of it and then his girlfriend is afraid to leave it because who's gonna take care of the mom and all that stuff and i think all of that makes it like you know it makes it heartwarming and kind of it's simple it, it, yeah it's exactly. very simple it's a very simple story we talked about many times when we watched the movie of us remaking it yes and we in our fear of if like you know first i mean michael bay he, he's his own thing we i mean we always we, we like always michael bay people bring trash michael bay, bay. But his movies are are certain style <laughs> yeah but if he got his hands on this they would be first of all that whole little small thing we talked about would be gone oh totally gone it would be a bunch of shots of nasa and people military It'd people be, trying would, to track them it down would be, a bunch of unnecessary characters he would turn it into a generic space battle movie and it would lose all the feel yeah. that this has it needs it needs kind of like a someone could understand i mean actually you know jj abrams he's nowhere going to touch something like that but that kind of feel to it like a well, wannabe spiel he already surpassed this he's not star course. wars but i think I think you would have to go with an unknown, kind of like someone who's done something that touches upon this. You yeah, know? like unknown, commercially, commercial. Exactly. Like the guy who did Godzilla or the Chlorophyll yeah, director. Yeah. Like someone yeah. that's done a movie, they can prove that they can do a, a, an effects movie. Because yeah. you know, there's no way, no doubt about it. Now it would be there would be a lot of effects in it. Oh Those sure. Those battle scenes would. It would probably look like Star Trek because every space movie has to have that kind of like the budget would have to be to big just in the sheer fact that like if someone like me were to direct it, it would be like shooting two movies. You would have to shoot the small town story movie, and then you would have this gigantic space epic adventure mm-hmm. that's going on, and somehow tie it in between. And that's where you need a director that can do that properly. You need to tie those two worlds together. And make it in a believable fashion because it's like without the small town vibe and the way the movie starts off the first half you wouldn't give a fuck about the second half no matter how big it was just because it's like kind of like a tadpole being thrown into a pond and then it has to survive on its own it's kind of like a small guy small town kid that all of a sudden is like hey you know what you have these skills you're the last hope get into this ship and now you have to go save our ass and you have to believe that mm-hmm. somehow so that's what I, I don't know to well me, I mean if you want to compare it to like classic stories I mean he, Alex I mean those kind of movies he's kind of like Frodo he is like Stro- where like he's like all of a sudden you're the only one that can save the world exactly and then he's kind of like well I, I live in Hobbiton I don't have to deal with any of the other world but eventually it would get to you it's gonna eventually say that to one part one day exactly. they're gonna go planet by planet Exactly. Eventually, it'll get to you. Exactly. And like we were making fun of this, like we, we brought it up, but it's kind of like the last Starfighter is kind of like the last Samurai. <laughs> it's, you know, it's the whole, you're the last one that can help us. You're thrown into a world you don't know. And you have a skill that somehow pertains to that world. And it's like it's only hope. So, I mean... We're rambling on now. Yeah, but of course. The good and the bad, we went through it. The bad is the bad, obviously... The first thing I can think of is the, the villain was weak. The villain was horrendous. That's probably the worst part of the movie. Yes. The villain was... Non-existent. Yeah. First of all, yeah, he's hardly... There's a part where we're like, oh yeah, there's a bad guy. I forgot. Yeah. He's just there as, as, as a threat to move the plot. 
He's lame. He, he's very he, lame. He, he's not scary. He's not funny. He's nothing. No, he's like a little. He kind of sounds like he look. He acts. He acts like the Nickelodeon. The Power Rangers had a better villain. <laughs> the woman yes. from Power Rangers <laughs> or the big buff guy. Oh, with yeah, Z yeah. on it. Z. Yes. Z that was more intimidating. That's sad. Yeah, no, he the was, just, was bad. He was just a little whiny bitch. Even when I was a bitch. kid, I remember thinking the bad guy sucked. Yeah, he was a little whiny bitch. I wouldn't even consider him the bad guy because we really should have had somebody over him, like an emperor kind of type, and he would be kind of like the mo- the villain of the movie, but yeah. not of the story. But yeah, it's kind of like uh, the Riddick Chronicles, where you kind of have to accept they have a bad guy, but it's more a fact of. It's an imperial thing where there's another empire that's just gonna take over and assimilate your but the, the your planet. The one he fought with was the dread guy, Carl Urban. He was the one with the ponytail, the, the mullet guy. Okay. Yeah, but I'm saying okay. the main there's a main bad guy in that movie too. But you know how the main fear is that assimilation. It's just a giant empire is gonna come, yeah, kill off your race and move on to the next like locust. You kind of have to uh, adopt that type of mentality in this. It's kind of like a locust thing. The bad guy's weak as shit, poorly written out. So you just kind of have to deal with the fact that, okay, the bad guys are just bad guys. You just have to fight them off or they're going to eventually destroy you. So that's what you accept in that. That's why it's bad because you don't really feel anger. You don't feel any kind of emotion towards the bad guys. They're just kind of there. Yeah. I think that the fact that, probably for budget reasons or whatever, the threat, even though it will affect Earth, it doesn't really feel like Earth is involved. It feels, yeah, exactly. That's probably what the remake would do is make it more the battle would be it, like Independence Day. It's more, there's going to be more uh, consequences to your home planet soon. And exactly, I mean, it's very much a... You can tell it's a budget issue, man. It's, yeah, it, it feels very small, and they're trying to make the most of the story it. is bigger than what they could do. Exactly, they're stretching it. They have a big story, but they don't have the technology or the money at the time, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, that is what you take with it. But no matter what, the movie is—it's a good movie, it's a good man. It's—it's it's one of those movies that always stuck with us. We always talk about it. It has a lot of potential, and they did the best they can with what they had. The acting was good. Yeah. Um, Centauri was great. Centauri was awesome. They were all good. What, what's the name of the uh, the penis head? I always forget his name. His uh, Gr- Greg. Greg. In Greg. the movie? In the Greg, Greg or something Greg, like that. whatever. Penis he, head was good. He always reminds me of Lou Gossett Jr. in Enemy Mind. They yes. look the same. Uh, <laughs> that's another good That's another one. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually a hell of a movie. Yeah, the opening scene. No, yeah, the movie is actually kind of ruthless, man. Uh, I never forget. There's a scene when the guy gets thrown into like this. One of the bad guys gets thrown into like this grinder. Yes. He's like ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He gets, his arm gets cut out. He's chopped up. Yeah. yeah. I never forget that too. So you know, that's that another, was a, that that's was another review to come. So but I mean, overall, yeah, Last Starfire. Recommend it. Hell yeah, Last Starfire still kicks ass. I haven't seen it in years. Saw it tonight for the first time in a long time, and. Even with its flaws, I feel like it's a movie that has it has something, man, something special about it, and I definitely recommend it. If you haven't seen it, go fucking watch it. Go watch it on Blu-ray; it looks really good. And then we'll, you'll uh, join us next time for uh, Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. We're going if you there. Saw We're going <laughs> Guardians there. of the Galaxy. I'm sure a lot of people have somewhat of a peaked interest if they don't know who Howard the Duck is. And yes, there was an 80s movie that we will be reviewing next. Till next time. Peace. (laughs) Yeah, the chop the shit.